This is Geometry, Chapter 2, Section 1, in which we will begin our study of inductive reasoning and conjecture. The idea of inductive reasoning involves using a number of examples to draw a conclusion. The conclusion is what we call a conjecture. When you use inductive reasoning, you get to a conjecture. What we're basically talking about is you're expecting a pattern to continue. Whatever the pattern is that you've observed, you expect it to continue happening that way. So for example, if I were to suddenly become an evil person and drop pop quizzes on you every Monday for four Mondays in a row, you would expect the pattern to continue. So your conjecture would then be that you expect a quiz the next Monday as well. That's what we're talking about with inductive reasoning, is expecting patterns to continue. So they want us to write a conjecture that describes a pattern. And then they're going to ask us to use our conjecture to find the next item in line. So we have these movie start times, for example. And we have the first movie starts at 11.30, then the next one at 1.45, then 4 o'clock, and then 6.15. Well, if we look at our times closely, we notice that they're 2 hours and 15 minutes apart. So then our conjecture would be each showing of the movie starts 2 hours and 15 minutes after the previous one. That's our conjecture. That's what we've observed from the pattern, is that it's been 2 hours and 15 minutes each time, so we expect that pattern to continue. So our next showing, we would expect to be 6.15 add 2 hours and 15 minutes, you get 8.30. So our pattern holds up, if our pattern holds up, the next one should start at 8.30. That's what we're talking about doing, finding what the pattern is and then expecting it to continue. And we can even do this symbolically. If we look at what we have, we have an arrow pointing upward an hour, arrow pointing right, an arrow pointing down, what's happening is it's turning clockwise each time. So our conjecture is that the arrow is rotating 90 degrees clockwise. So the next arrow should point to the left. Okay. Now, one other idea we need to talk about involves truth of statements. If we're going to say a statement is true, it must be true all the time. If I'm going to make a statement and say that it's going to be true, it has to always be true. If you can come up with one time, just one case where it's not true, then we have to say the statement is false. And anything that you can come up with that proves something is false is called a counterexample. Okay, something has to always be true to be considered a true statement in logic. If you find any case where it's not true, then you would, you're left with no choice. It has to be false. So, for example, sitting in the dugout, batters come in and say, man, this guy always throws a fastball on the first pitch. Well, the counterexample was, no, he threw me a curve. Okay, that would be a counterexample. That would be a case where it wasn't true. 
Suppose someone says a shape with four sides is always a, is a square. No, that shape has four sides. And that's certainly not a square. So that would be a counterexample. So you're going to be asked to do a few things. You're going to be asked to make conjectures by studying the pattern. Use your conjecture to see if you can find the next item in the list. And then they're going to ask you to look at some statements and see if you can make a counterexample for them. That means you're going to have to think of what they're saying and think of how to say that they're wrong. Okay. And hopefully, as always, if you had questions along the way, you wrote those down. Bring them in with you. And we'll see you in class.